I want to ask you now, refined, bleached, and deodorized. Big $10 scary words. Right. Specifically, what's going on that you're concerned about in that the refining, let's the heating oxidation, we can table that, that's obvious. Refining, bleaching, deodorizing. What specifically in that chemical right, process right. is increasing risk? What is the, uh, isn't there something called hexane or something? There is hexane, yeah. Yeah, you and can measure it. And that's neurotoxic? Benzene also. Hexane is neurotoxic. But again, it's a question of- And hexane course, comes off of when you do the bleach and the and the oxidizing it's, it's of these oils. It's used to extract the oil from something where- Right, right, right. You, you can imagine it's hard to extract oil from corn. So it's used to like, you know, separate out the oil. And then they try to remove the hexane, but some residual remains. Mm -hmm. I tried to look for how much residual remains, and it does vary. Um, I think there's like one study out of Iran or something like that I found. But my, my question is, again, this comes down to- what do we know and what do we don't know? The fact that there is something that has neurotoxic potential used to treat food, I think is, eh, that concerns me. But that's very different from someone saying seed oils contain neurotoxins and implying that there's actually seed oil associated neurotoxicity, mm -hmm. which it's, it's hard because you wouldn't go off of like what is required to cause acute toxicity. It's not like you're going to have a tablespoon of corn oil and get neurotoxicity. Mm -hmm. So there's there's the the argument of like, well, small cumulative doses are problematic. It's a reasonable hypothesis. The thing is, I don't think we'll ever really know. There have been studies on this. Um, Steve, will you show my screen real quick? So we have, I mean, this is a study on the estimated of trace amounts of benzene and solvent extracted vegetable oils and seed oil cakes. I mean, all, all seed oils are solvent extracted. So again, they're talking vegetable oils versus seed oils, but um, you can look in here and you can see if you read the paper that there are often trace amounts of benzene, which is a known carcinogen mm -hmm. um, in, in seed oils. Um, there are other potential contaminants also. So we have studies looking at- Go Crolian's one. Um, acrolein is, is acrolein. one that's when you heat the oil. Mm -hmm. Um, you can look at, uh, the presence of heavy metals in vegetable oils that's been looked at. Um, now I mentioned this early in the podcast. Antimony is probably the biggest issue. Um, it's migration from the polyethylene containers, of veg edible vegetable oils. Um, and then the third one to consider is that the vegetable oils are actually quite high in phthalates. We haven't talked about this at all. Um, Phthalates are endocrine disrupting sort of oh, fragrance. Phthalates are in phthalates. vegetable oils? Yeah. And this is, they say it in the title, non-negligible exposure source to humans. Wow. And they actually give a, um, a, a relative amount here. In this paper, they do the calculated average estrogenic equivalence of several major phthalates in edible oils. It falls into the range of 2.7 to 958.1 nanograms of estradiol per liter. 45 to 396 times those in bottled water. So this is a non, um, uh, non negligible amount of estrogenic equivalents from these phthalates. I mean, you know, we're talking like there is a massive exposure to humans today cumulatively to these phthalates. So right. if I've never heard many people talk about this in seed oils and whether this is coming from the processing or the storage in the plastic containers, you could solve this by putting a soybean oil into a glass container, mm -hmm. but that's never going to happen, right? Most of these oils are in um, uh, these polyethylene plastic yeah. containers on the shelf for many times, for many, many uh, months. Yeah, it's two interesting. Years. I wasn't aware of um, bu buying the oils in glass. I knew glass bottles would probably be better, but I didn't. I uh, wasn't aware of the importance of having a glass bottle that doesn't have exposure to UV light. The UV light has some sort of effect on on the oil in the bottle. It, it's part of the oxidation process. Light, right. light, heat, and oxygen are part of this this process that breaks down the oils. Yeah. Oh, that's There's so another study that I can find in a moment that actually looked at the peroxide value in omega-3 and omega-6 oils, and they might have looked at acrolein or other breakdown products. I know we talked about a study, Nick, where they heated oil, yeah. right? And this is interesting. So you can take we discussed this earlier in the podcast. Again, we're differentiating this from a handful of walnuts um, in in function here, uh, in practice. You don't put walnuts into a, a deep fryer, but you put soybean oil into a deep fryer. If you go to Five Guys, if you go to In-N-Out, if you go to McDonald's, if you go anywhere, I've asked them what's in their fryer. It's usually some mix of soybean oil, corn, and canola oils. And they change the oil once a month. <laughs> once a week, probably, <laughs> right. which is pretty crazy when you think about you're going 24 hours or you know 16 hours a day in the in the fryer oil. Yeah. 
I so just texted you the graph. <clears throat> uh, your computer's hooked up. You can pull it up. Yeah, well, if you look at what's in, um, so um, some of these oils, these these are the aldehydes, um, and and some of these aldehydes are they're quite high with heating. There's another graph in um, in the paper or where they talk about the amount of specific aldehydes uh, and acrolein specifically. Um, the amount of acrolein um, in a large French fry at McDonald's is equivalent to the amount of acrolein in a pack of cigarettes. Now, this is just one compound, and when I've said this in the past in my content, uh, people like to say, Paul Saladino is saying that seed oils are worse than cigarettes, which is not what I just said. Uh, people can rewatch the tape, but um, it's, it's basically saying that of this one compound, which is a carcinogen, um, which is very likely, it is, is pretty significant. So this is a quote from there. Uh, 154 gram potato chip alda serving uh, aldehyde contents are not dissimilar to those arising um, from a daily allocation wow. of 25 tobacco cigarettes. So this is what we're talking, this is a specific use case of seed oils, right? This is a heated fry. This is the potentially the worst use case of seed oils. Right. Um, that looks to be very bad, but um, at least in terms of that one compound. So there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a spectrum here. So what about like uh, steak and shake down the road? They're advertising that they cook all their fries in tallow now. So uh, my perspective is this doesn't solve the equation completely. If you actually, when you read into that one, they, they never solved this problem where the fries were pre-soaked in seed oils. Oh no. <laughs> so they, they're cooking them in tallow. The tallow they're cooking them in has been um, altered. It's refined. Mm. So it, it has less saturated fats and more monounsaturated fats so they can work with it more easily. So it's a, um, it's a liquid at room temperature. Tallow is not usually liquid in 73, 74 degrees. So the right. steak and shake tallow is a refined tallow that has more monounsaturated fats, less saturated fats, just at a, at, at a clean, just a simple organic chemistry equation, like a peroxide mm -hmm. value. The, the more unsaturated an oil is, the more quickly it's going to be damaged when you heat it. Mm -hmm. And so theoretically, if you had a higher saturated fat content oil, like a pure tallow, which is a refined, which is sort of a, an oil that is from beef fat, right? So people don't know tallow, it's a beef fat. Um, it's, it's solid room temperature. If you were to heat that oil, it's going to have a lower degree of oxidation, not zero, but a lower degree of oxidation relative to olive oil. Olive oil will have a higher degree of oxidation, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lower degree of oxidation relative to a seed oil down, down the road we go. Um, and so theoretically, steak and shake cooking in their fries and tallow decreases the amount of things like this acrolein, these aldehydes. Yeah. Um, somewhat, but I just think that for human health long-term, look, we're all going to, I've eaten French fries in my life. We're all going to eat French fries. But if you have any significant amount of your diet, that's from a deep fried food, no matter what it's cooked in, you're probably not optimizing. Yeah. And I don't think it completely absolves it. You can't just cook in tallow, a deep fry something in tallow and expect it to be right. Not have any oxidative liability in the human organism. Um, so there's a lot. This is like, it's just, there. 